Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Tuesday and welcome to another episode of Startups Ask. So in this episode, we discuss very interesting things about startups, about the startup ecosystem, about, uh, about you know, jargons, about uh, what investors think, how they think, how they invest. And uh, every Tuesday, 12 p.m. UK time, I try and bring you something interesting uh, about startups. It's a very short show, only half an hour. So first 15 minutes, we discuss something interesting. Uh, and then next 15 minutes, uh, we are open to taking questions. So happy to answer your questions then. Today, what I the topic which I picked was uh, related to uh, some questions which I had received uh, on my LinkedIn and on my email. Myself, Tushar Kansal of Consultancy Ventures. Uh, in my previous life, I've worked for Deloitte and Touche Private Equity. I've worked for India's largest venture fund by the number of deals called Brand Capital. I have also handled $3 billion treasury at the Russian telecom company MTS. And I was CFO of a company called Distribution Logistics, which is owned by the American PE fund Guggenheim Partners. In the last seven, eight years, I manage consultancy ventures. We are a small 10 member team based out of Delhi, India. And we, I, in my personal capacity, I invest in companies, but as an outfit, we help venture capital funds and startups get access to capital. To begin with, I will discuss about a very important uh, topic for all the startup founders out there. I hope you are keeping safe at this time of COVID, uh, maintaining social distancing, wearing masks, and also getting uh, the vaccination done. Now, the topic I like to take today is what are the best practices to connect with investors? Now, everybody feels uh, whenever a startup is looking for raising funding, they always feel, how do we connect? There are so many funds, right? I mean, if we keep on counting, every other day we see a new fund coming in and raising money. We are very closely linked. Uh, we have very good relationship with Elevation Capital of 400 million raised recently, Fireside Ventures 118 million, and uh, DSG Consumer Partners, uh, and K Capital, and Sequoia Capital, and so on. Now, what are the best practices to connect with investors? The you know before you start reaching out to investors, you should have things ready with you. And on the documentation side, those things are business plan, business model, and probably if you are post revenue, then evaluation. These three things, uh, business plan, business model, and valuation will allow you to approach the investor in a structured manner. Business plan is a uh, you know, we prepare business plans. My team makes uh, valuation. My team also makes the pitch deck. Uh, so a pitch deck is a 15 slide document, which we show to investors. And a business plan uh, for us is a 25 page business report, a project report, which covers all the important points of, uh, uh, of the business, whether it is go to market strategy or the product positioning, brand positioning, and uh, you know the fundraise and all the aspects. After the WeWork debacle, uh, the IPO of WeWork, which didn't happen, and WeWork was a, a big loss making company. So unit economics has come in the forefront. So we help our clients in business, in unit economics also, which means uh, in simple terms that each unit of product or service you are selling 
should be profitable. Then uh, you should know in the next five years, what is the roadmap? What do you want to be in the next five years as a company and as a team? So you should know your milestones. Then in your pitch deck and financial model, you will prepare five year projections, but also uh, prepare, you know, the pitch deck has to be prepared in such a way that it covers all the points like the problem statement, solution, the team behind uh, the marketing strategy, the product and competitors, what are your competitive advantages and uh, what is your future roadmap, how many funds you are seeking. And what is the use of funds? Then when you are approaching the investor, you should maintain a good profile on LinkedIn and also a profile on angel list and such good platform. And if you are approaching the investors, uh, then, you know, your Google presence should be good also. So write some blogs, create some videos, have a good uh, Google presence. If you are approaching through LinkedIn, then customize your invite. It should be personal. And uh, it's best if you can give some reference to the fund guys. And uh, if you are too early, you have just started out, it might be good to take help of companies like us uh, and also incubators and accelerators. We are closely networked with 24 incubators and accelerators. And uh, in fact, one of our portfolio companies recently got a 25 lakh uh, ru rupees, 25 lakh, uh, which would be something like uh, $40,000 funding from uh, one of the new incubators in the market. Also remember that the venture capital guys uh, haven't uh, come from any other planet. They are from the same community. But, you know, they get a number of deals, so so they are short of time. So you have to grab their attention span. And uh, always before approaching venture capital funds, always uh, know their investment thesis. Read the websites, know that how do they invest, which sector, what is the amount typically they invest, what is the stage of the company at, at which they invest and uh, any specific points like what is the market size, uh, the minimum, the total addressable market which they are seeking to uh, capture so that the valuation of their investee companies goes big. So these are all the ways, you know, which I've put it in short, the best practices to connect with investors. So let me take you to another very crucial thing, which the startups have asked me. I got emails, I got LinkedIn messages, and the startups really wanted to know if I could talk, maybe a very short talk on what is a term sheet. So the investor typically issues a term sheet. The first part of the term sheet is whether it is a binding term sheet or a non-binding term sheet. A binding term sheet means that the investor has to invest. After due diligence of the company, if some adverse factors come out, uh, if they are not too material in nature, then also the investor has to invest. And a non-binding term sheet means that the investor can leave the deal anytime. Then the term sheet contains the amount which the investor is investing, the percentage stake he wants to take, the company valuation at which he is taking the stake. And there are many uh, points in the term sheet like anti-dilution clause. Anti-dilution clause means that if in the future any other investor is given equity in the company at a valuation less than me, me as an investor, 
then I would be compensated by giving me extra shares so that my holding is as per the new reduced valuation. This is anti-dilution clause. Then, you know, the company might like to issue employee stock option plans, shares to the employees, basis their uh, one year, two year and three year performance. So these are called ESOPs. Then, you know, the investor might be investing not directly in equity, but also either through preference shares, convertible, non-convertible or uh, or uh, warrants or uh, debentures. And these instruments are quasi equity, quasi debt means half equity, half debt. So they have the features of debt and equity both. And uh, the term sheet will also contain certain conditions precedent and conditions subsequent. It means that uh, condition precedent has to be that whatever information the company has given to the investor till now, the company assures that this information is true. Condition subsequent means that this term sheet uh, once signed and once uh, uh, you know the investor puts in money and takes equity then the company will ensure that all the process is followed properly and uh, the deal is the transaction is done properly then you know there are certain rights which the investor gets in the company like uh, voting rights on the board of directors like uh, there are certain reserved matters that you know if the company sells an asset above a certain value then uh, the you know the approval of the investor has to be taken if the company is recruiting a new cxo if the company is creating a new subsidiary if the company is getting a new investor so all these important points form a part of reserved matters and the reserved matters are those matters on which the company has to take approval of the investor the original investor then there are certain information rights uh, like the investor is entitled to get audited annual reports monthly reports quarterly reports and uh, Apart from that, uh, there are some uh, high, uh, you know, uh, futuristic kind of clauses like liquidation preference, options pool. Uh, liquidation preference means that uh, the company, the investor has the first right to exit in a future liquidity event. Means that whenever in the future some funding will happen in the company, the investor has a liquidation preference and uh, liquidation preference can also be 1x more than 1x 2x 1.5x so the investor has more right to liquidate his shares uh, than the total uh, holding with him or her then you know happy to discuss more like exit clauses the company will come out with an IPO on the stock exchange. If the IPO doesn't happen, the company will buy back the shares from the investor, giving him a promised IRR, internal rate of return. If that doesn't happen, then the founders will buy back uh, the shares with an IRR promise. Or then, you know, one more which is there is the company will find a new investor, uh, get a third party valuer, and uh, get the exit to the original investor. There are certain clauses which are drag along, tag along, and right of first refusal. Right of first refusal means that the first investor, whenever future shares are sold in the company, the first investor has a right, the first right to buy them. Drag along means that if the founders of the company are selling their shares to a new investor. 
then the original investor has a right to uh, it's i'm sorry i'm talking about tag along has a right to tag along means sell his shares with the founder shares drag along means that if the suppose the in, new investor is asking for 51% equity in the company and the original investor has 20% then he has a right to drag 31% of founder shares and sell a block of 51% to the new investor but this also requires consent of the founders you can't just drag along blindly the valuation at which the drag along is happening should also be uh, approved by the founders then there are esop pools which we have already discussed now let me take some more questions uh, we are already 20 minutes in the show uh, samuel hati is asking that what is bridge financing uh bridge financing means that uh, uh that you know you have a funding round in the future it can be debt or equity but uh, you are falling short of cash so you are raising some money in between and typically this money which you get in bridge it is uh, costly money so either it is uh, on high interest rate if it is a debt or if it is an equity then Uh, there are some conditions which are a little bit high like uh, loan against shares it forms equity bridge uh, so equity bridge like you have founders shares you pledge them as a collateral with the financial institution and he gives you loans against those shares loan bridge uh, bridge loan means it is less than typically less than 1 year tenor and it is at a high interest rate an ipo bridge means that uh, suppose you are coming out with an ipo the stock market falls so you need money because you are not able to come out launch your ipo immediately so the investment banker uh, gives you some money as an ipo bridge and uh, uh, you know the the typically the investment banker the ib which has underwritten your ipo it can be hard underwriting or soft underwriting but typically in a hard underwriting the ib has to give you money then there are differential voting rights uh, you know mark zuckerberg of facebook he has a small stake as in less than 40% in facebook but he controls more than 75% of the board of directors it is because the shares the nature of the shares which mark has they are differential voting rights the their the voting rights of those shares on the board of directors is more than their total number so these are uh, some of the ways in which uh, bridge financing happens now let me take i have three four more questions showing here i will ask uh, okay let us take this one why do investors go after a small idea with a bigger growth strategy rather than a big idea with a smaller growth strategy see the big ideas typically are because of a man's ego like they are called vanity projects like china has become very rich within a matter of 30 40 years it has become the second largest economy on the planet now because the government of china believes in creating big infrastructure and infrastructure which rivals uh, the us and europe so they keep on coming out with biggest in the world kind of projects so the dam which they have three gorges it is the largest dam in the world and people say that it causes earthquakes you know the scientists they say that and it develops a lot of cracks so people are, are you know it, they are already saying that it is a disaster that they created this dam 
and uh, there are ghost cities in china which they thought that all the villages will move to formal cities but that didn't happen because people are too used to their way of life and they just can't shift to a city kind of life so these are white elephant kind of projects and uh, so you know they are big ideas with small growth strategies the biggest example of a big idea with a small growth strategy is we work we work leased out buildings in best locations for you know tenor of 9 years 10 years 15 years at high lease cost and the target customers of we work they were gig economy people mostly people who were in and out of jobs and who could pay less or the people with small businesses so it is a classic example of a bigger uh, a big idea with a small growth strategy what are the growth strategies which are possible uh, broadly uh, people say there are you know the there is a lot of talk on growth strategies the broadly it can be classified into market penetration product development market expansion and diversification these are the four ways in which uh, uh, growth uh, strategies function now we didn't discuss uh, the question said why do investors go after a small idea with a bigger growth strategy now take let's take some examples of a small ideas with big growth strategies khan academy so mr khan used to create videos to teach his cousins about uh, their college studies and also about the entrance uh, college and entrance examinations and his <coughs> excuse me it was a very small idea making videos 3 minutes long 5 minutes long putting them on internet and the growth strategy which he had was that he used to tell his cousins they can share these videos wherever they like so they became viral so much so that mr bill gates called uh, mr khan and in, uh, gave him a big donation uh, i think more than 100 million dollars and khan academy today is a umbrella business with uh, almost content on huge number of uh, areas and sectors second uh, you know you would have heard of slack the office communication software now when slack was being built it was just built as a communication tool between two three students and these students used to work out of a garage and while building this communication tool between themselves it caught the fancy of someone who thought this could become very big and uh, eventually slack is a unicorn and came out with an ipo and it's a multi billion dollar company now twitter twitter is a small idea having short text messages but the growth strategy behind twitter was the way it onboarded you so when you opened an account on twitter it asked you your interest then it showed you a lot of twitter profiles and uh, you started following them and because you started following them your home page just became populated with all the interesting tweets and you feel like using it much more similarly linkedin linkedin if you join it used to ask your gmail id or email id then use that contact list which is already there in your email id to show you linkedin profiles associated with that contact list and these are all the people who you already know and when you network with these people on linkedin on day 1 of opening an account on linkedin naturally you feel like using linkedin more so this is the way linkedin used a uh, big growth strategy 
and it was a small idea. The last example is Airbnb, which simplified user reviews. So it was very difficult to read user reviews. But if you read Airbnb, it gives you ratings on the user reviews and it makes very them very simple and visible. So people are able to uh, understand what is the quality of the uh, place we are going to stay. Can't take any more questions, guys. Uh, we discussed about how the best practices to connect with investors. We discussed term sheet and uh, we discussed critical elements of the term sheet and uh, we took two, three questions. So it's almost over. That's it for now. Myself, Tushar Kansal. Uh, my team creates uh, pitch decks, uh, business plans, valuations, and we help uh, all types of startups globally. Uh, as of as we speak, I have uh, business clients from Singapore, from Dubai, from US, UK, Hong Kong, and some from India as well. And uh, we are networked with more than 325 global investors including venture capital funds, angel investors, incubators, accelerators. So, uh, and we also get them access to venture capital and equity funding. So with this, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on my LinkedIn, which is Tushar Kansal. And my company's name is Consultancy Ventures. That's using my surname. I'm also available on my website, consultancy.com, and also my email ID, which is TK, that's my initials, at consultancy.com. Happy to be answering all your questions, to be on this show, and uh, love to connect with you all. Do write in. Uh, let's connect on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming each Tuesday, UK 12 startups ask thank you to abil bake thank you to hasmik and thank you to carol and thank you to la token vctv for the wonderful production ethics and a wonderful program have a good day